Hello, welcome to another installment of JC3D. Today I'm going to 3D model you a Tylenol bottle. Here you can see I've got it loaded into Cinema 4D. I've got a guide in my top view and a front view. Uh, I went on the internet and found this one. It's got a better guide. It's got less distortion on it. If you look at the ones I took, my camera adds a little bit of bulge to it. So I'm going to go ahead and use this uh, more perfect photography one for my front guide, and then I'll use my top shot for the top guide there, really just to get these details that go around the cap there. So um, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and make the bottle first. So I've put this object in here just to center my guides, and I'm going to look at that real quick. I'll just really quickly match this up to about the size of my guide, and I'm going to move the guide if it doesn't appear to line up going under the philosophy that I always want everything aligned with the center of my uh, universe here in 3D because it makes it easier when you're working and you want to mirror things or do revolves. So I'm just going to line this guy up like this, match the size like so, and then uh, let me go up here on this red one, looks like it's about that big, and then I'll match the top guy to that. Let's see, configure, just clicking view, configure. Each window has the same commands, you'll notice, and each one you can make full screen, like that. So this one here, I want to configure. I'm going to scale it down a little bit, and move it over. Move it up. That looks pretty good. Um, Now I can start 3D modeling the object right there. But uh, I said I was going to do the bottle first, so here we go. So I'm just going to take a spline, I'm taking a guess about how high it goes, so I'll just say about right there. I also scan this label in. So I've got that as a texture when it comes time. Apply that to the bottle. Okay, bring this into the center point. Now, even this professional photography has lens distortion. So I'm gonna wanna just kinda take a guess here and flatten these out like this and scale them down. Let's take a look at that and see what that looks like when I revolve it. Come to the lathe tool. Just put it around like that. I like to turn these into B splines just because of the way that I work to plot the, the points out there. Looks pretty cool to me. Now, let's go ahead and make that top part. So I already had this object here, which is looking pretty good. Let me just scale it down a little bit. If you go into object mode up here, you're going to get those controls on this uh, platonic primitive, which is a cylinder. Anytime you're working, if you can grab an object that's similar to another object, you save that time. You don't have to plot out and create the cylinder. So you just pop a cylinder in. That looks pretty good to me. Now this little ridge down here, um, and in fact, even this object right here, I might have been better off using a uh, which caller. I could have used. And see, so when in my mind I'm going through the thickness of the object, so I could have used one of these tubes right here. 
Um, but I can also add thickness with this trick, uh, with a cloth trick. I think that's what I'm going to do. So in order to get more detail down here, I want to make it go wider like that. I'm just going to go ahead and current state this to an object. And I'm going to select the bottom polygons. So I'll go into my polygon selector. And then select these like this. Then if I go in, I just zoom in on this. If I hit the eye tool, that's going to extrude the polygons like this. You can see it growing out. And then I'm just going to lower that down ever so slightly like that. Then hit D. Oops, sorry, I hit I again. If you hit I, it does an ex a polygon extrude that sort of goes, think of it as an inner one in a way. It goes within the set selection, but it doesn't extrude it in 3D. If you hit D, it takes your selection and, and adds more polygons, but extrudes it. So it's very similar, but very different. Uh, you'll go back and forth with those two all the time. You can see it looks a little polygony. This is actually really, really great if it's a gaming element and you've got these turned down to be low poly, like something like this. You know, that can help games produce it faster. But, you know, when you're working in here, you can crank it right up. Let's see. So, but now since this one's current stated to an object, you can't go in and create more subdivisions. So the only way to do it is to add a subdivision surface and that'll subdivide these and smooth them out like that. Now it can also kind of overly smooth things. So if you want to get some tight spots back, you've got to add a couple of subdivisions. You could do that with this tool here, cut loop path cut. And all you need to do, oops, I just flipped it over. All you need to do is just go in and add a couple of cuts close to areas where you want to have a good tight corner. Like that, and then there's one near the top, I think we want to do like that, like that. Now if you look at it, it's going to be closer to the object that we're looking for. All right, let's um, add these little edge pieces. Okay, it also seemed to make it smaller, so we can just increase this. If I select all these points, or even just go into this mode, now I can scale it so it's wider but not taller if I turn off the Y. Then when I'm scaling it, see, it'll get bigger like this, but it won't go up and down. And then I can go back out to meet these. Oh, you know what? I want it a little bit smaller, because I'm going to put these in is a separate thing going around. Okay, so now I'm going to grab this um, cube, bring it right up here, and I'm going to make one of these little grip rip things. A grip rib. I'm just going to scale it down like this so I know it's scaled universally. Like so. And raise it up. This goes right up to the surface like that. And then we're going to want to put a little fillet on there. Right here. Give it some roundness. Like that. Okay, then I just create a null. Bring this null up around there. I'm going to create a cloner. Drop that underneath there. That's just so my pivot point's down in the center instead of over here. I drop that down. The default is this grid, but I want radial. And then I want to turn down the radius like that. And I'll just lower that down a little. Okay, now I need to get an estimate for how many there are in there. So I'm going to hide everything, group it. And I just, I usually pick about a quarter, you know, I'll go from like here to here. But let's say if we, even if we just did half of that, we went from here to here, or if we did half of that, went here to here. So we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six. So let's see, let me see if I just try to do half this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15. So let's say there's 30 to get over to there, just as a guess. So that's going to be 30 times 4 
to get around the whole horn. So you can do math in here. You can do 30 times 4 and hit enter and it tells you the answer is 120. Then all you've got to do is kind of just look at it and decide if it looks right. To me it looks pretty good. So there's the little grips for your hand when you're trying to open the bottle. Okay, now I noticed, now this top piece is going to be transparent and there's a couple of details in here that we can add that look pretty cool. So right here is this little ring, so I'll do that with a tube. And put the tube in. Now if it's off center with my guide, my object could be cocked or my camera could be cocked when I was trying to take the photo. So you want to err on the side of, go with the Cartesian coordinates right here. So you can see, it looks like I want to do this. Don't do that. You just have to basically do a little white lie <laughs> and not really follow your guide. And you got to kind of know when not to do that because it makes more sense for it to be perfectly in the center. So you just sort of loosely, oops, I want the scale. Like so. You get it kind of about. So if it's if it wants to go to here but wants to go to there, then just shoot over on that side, under on that side. And then make sure the thickness is about correct. Something sort of like that. And then we know this wants to be pretty thin. And I want to crank up the subdivisions. Because I'm just going to leave this as a polygon uh, platonic primitive. Something like that. Now let's take a look at our cap. Okay, there's the cap. Now, this is a solid object, watertight they'll call it. But what I'm going to do is make it unwatertight right now and delete these polygons. Okay. Now, I can give this object a thickness because right now it's paper thin by hitting Command C and searching for cloth. And then double clicking on this cloth surface. It looks like a little t shirt, a green t shirt kind of. Well, maybe like it looks like a Barbie doll, like you're about to put a cutout cloth on her or something. All right, so there it is, sort of the pattern of a shirt. Now, if I just apply this to this object right down here, by making it a parent, making it a child, then I can turn down subdivisions, because I've already got a subdivision surface taking care of that. And then my thickness here, I can go and increase. Oh, let's see, I'm not really seeing any results. Why is that? Oh, because I've got it hidden, maybe? No. on here. Let me hide everything. Let's just pull this out so we can look at it and see what's going wrong. So I'm not getting a thickness. Maybe what it is, I'm going to take it out of the subdivision surface. Um, oh, it's got a top. It does have a top. Should be working. Let's see. Subdivisions. See, the subdivision is affecting it, but the thickness is not. Hmm. Let me think here why that would be. I'm not quite sure, to be honest with you. Um, let's see. Do to do to do to do to do. Um, hmm. Let me just do a quick test on a different object over here. And save that to an object, delete the top, like so. Now, if I put that underneath the cloth service, can I give it thickness? Oh, yeah. Oh, it must just be that my scale is so huge that I'm working at that I have to put it pretty big. One way you can get around that is if you have a pair of calipers and you're working, you can kind of get the object to real world coordinates. Um, but okay, so it was working. Let's just put that in there and then let's crank it up the number. So I've got negative 100. Oh, that was too big. Negative 10. Okay, so you see I was starting to get a thickness to it? I'll drop that underneath that subdivision surface. Okay. So now, yeah, it doesn't really look that great. Maybe negative 5. Ah, okay, that's better. So now I've got a thickness to this object. I'm going to turn off my work plan there. Okay. Now we can go back to this. Push this up so it hits that surface right there. 
Let's see it'll like disappear and just bring it down a little bit. There we go. We shouldn't be able to see it up there, but we can see it down here. And then what I want to do is create these little lines right here. They almost kind of look like the pill. Like a subliminal or something, I'm not quite sure, but they look pretty cool. Okay. Let's see. This is what the water looks like where I live, by the way. Just kidding, it's coffee. Okay, so let's see. Now, um, to get this funky shape here, you can make this in a number of ways, but I think the, a good way to do it would be to just make a square, center the square so it's about in the right spot, scale it down like this, and then we're gonna go in and change the height I like that. It looks like the width wants to be a little bit wider. And then add some rounding to the corners. Turn that up. Maybe a little bit wider. And you can just check the thickness right here against this. That seems pretty good but it wants to have the edges rounded a little bit more. That looks pretty good, maybe a little bit taller. Like that, okay, that looks pretty cool. Then what I'm gonna do is just extrude that down, this. Make sure that the uh, extrusion's going in the right direction there. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now if we look at the tube, the tube has a height of 1.842, so I'm gonna copy that in the clipboard change this extrude height from 39 to that one and then lift it up well let's see am i at the zero i'm at the zero right now so what i'll do is just introduce this cloner at the zero drop well actually i'm going to add a null drop this under the null that that makes the position slightly different if you look at this guy well actually this extrude parent position is in the zero what i was worried about was this guy he's offset that that matters this relation to the origin when you start to put it underneath a cloner. All right, so I'll put it underneath the cloner. Let's do a radial. Take this radius and just turn it down so that it matches where my point was. So I've already fixed that radius, kind of. And then we just want to count how many there are. So we got one, two, three. So three times four is going to be 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Go in here and put 12. Now, if I wanted to, I could rotate this to line up with the guide like that. Probably not a bad idea. Give it a little bit of randomness. And then this will lift up. There we go. Just stick it in just a little bit like that. Now, there's a whole way to actually make these merge so that the plastic is merged and you get a nice little bevel going right there. But it's probably um, overkill for this particular one. Now, all of these might benefit from a fillet, so I'm just going to throw a fillet on this guy, turn it down, maybe 0.3. Then I'll throw a fillet on the faces of these caps. There's the bottom cap. Uh, what fillet did I put on this? 0.3. I'll just copy that and put it on these so it's the same. 0.3. All right. Every object in the real world, part of like luxury production, if you read the book about Steve Jobs, so one of the main things that they go into is adding bevels to the product. All luxury items have more bevels. That's really one of the main differences. So we put some bevels in there and it looks like it's worth a little bit more. Even though it's not. <laughs> it's a little trick. All right. So let's see. Okay, I think I've got the top here. Now let me just bring my bottle back. Okay, we're getting pretty darn close to having the bottle here. Now I can put a texture on this. The way that I'd want to do that is I've got my base object right here um, that I've spun around this lathe. I'm just going to turn down the revolutions. I've got, I've got the subdivisions cranked up to 64. You can actually see them if I go into this mode. But when I'm, a go, when I'm about to go into my next move, um, it actually probably wouldn't be too bad because all I'm going to do is select these center polygons to make the um, texture set selection. But 
I could lower the polygons here and then put it underneath the hypernerve. So there's kind of two different ways to approach it. Um, once you go high poly, you to undo it, you, the computer has to kind of calculate a remesh, which sometimes introduces triangles, and triangles can be pretty bad later on. If other people are trying to do UV map unwraps on your object, that might screw them up a little bit. So it's nice to keep it as, as quads. So it would be probably good just to go in here, lower this down to say like 12, and then current state this to an object. Now you see how the up and downs are pretty heavy? If you just take this and turn this to linear like that, that reduces those. And let's see, it was the caps on a certain setting. Caps seem to be fine. Okay, so now this is a little bit lower poly. I'll take that current state to an object like this. Um, then what I'm going to do is set selection. I'll select a loop selection right here, like that. And then what I'm going to do is introduce a texture to the scene. This little orb right here is your material tab. You can actually go into the database that you're working out of if you've got the texture right there. You can just drag and drop it from the finder into this object, uh, the material manager right here. Now what I want to do is just take this and throw it on these. Since these are selected and it's in polygon mode, you're going to notice it's going to pop up a set selection. I'll just delete these ones here that were auto-generated when I current state it to an object. So now watch when I drop it on here, you're going to see one pop up over there. This is the set selection. And then you've got the texture that's applied to that text, uh, text selection. I can add another one and color everything else. Um, but first what I want to do is just get this on there proper. In order to do that, since it's a cylinder, you want cylind cylindrical projection. So we go to the object, and we're going to click on cylindrical. Right now it's on UV mapping, which is the default. So we go to cylindrical, and then we can say text fit to object. It's going to fit it to the whole object from height to bottom, so I'm going to have to adjust that. So I go into my scale tool, go into texture mode, and then I'll scale that down. Now see how it's repeating? I'm going to take that off, tiling. And that'll help me place it. Wants to go from here to there. And let me just look at my guide real quick and see how tall the how tall it is. I'm just hiding everything under a null real quick. Okay, so it wants to go. If I just go like this, then I know that the top and the bottom are about as big as my screen right here. So then let's turn it back on. Then I know it's about as big as my screen. Like that. I'll just go down. Now it doesn't really want to go all the way around. See, there should be a gap here. So to put that gap in, you can go like this. See the length right here, U and V? They're at 100%. Well, if you could take that down, U is going around, I believe, and Y, <coughs> y is the height. So if I take this down to say 85, we're going to get a gap right there. Now you see this little thing right here, that, that corner? I actually cut that out, but I need to load the same texture. If I just copy it here, uh, somewhere in here, copy shader. Now you go down to your alpha channel, turn that on, and then load that into the alpha channel, paste. And then you can see that little corner just got cut out. It's subtle, but that's the way it should be. All right. So that's probably about right. I mean, I don't know exactly what that is. Maybe the guy, if the gap is a little bit too big, all you would do is change this to like 90, right? You, we might actually get a hint if we look at the Tylenol word here, and then we look at our guide, and we see, you know, how stretched it is. I can actually rotate it by offsetting it. So if I go like, whoops, not in V. V's up and down. But if I go like this, I can actually rotate it. Then when I'm starting to hide my object, I could tell, well, maybe it wants to be a little wider. So I can go in here, rather than 90, I could go 95. Um, and then, like that. Let's see if I do 100. Well, 100 seems too big to me. I think it needs a little gap, so I'll just go 95, like that. 
it's possible that this Tylenol bottle was a slightly different one that I had. So I have a hundred, I have a hundred capsules in there. This one has a hundred. I don't know. I guess it's similar. Oh, you know what it is? I think I've made it too tall. So let's see. I can make it look more square just by shrinking it right here. Just down to like ninety. There we go. Something like that. Close enough, I think. So if I go back into, I could smooth this lathe object because it looks a little polygony. If I put it a subdivision surface, drop it under it like that, and then. What I'm going to want is I oh, see that set set selection. That's what's going on. My set selection needs to be increased. So if I go like this, just increase that like that and then Go up to here to um, select store selection like that, and just copy the name right there of that one. Delete it, and then make sure you rename this one with that old name because that's what this material is looking for. So it had that selection dot one. Okay, so now we're getting a little bit closer here. So let's just go back really quickly to the guide. Um, I can hide everything by shutting this off. Okay, looks like it wants to be right up there. So let's move it up a little. Uh, might want to be in object mode here. So let's just bring these back to the default where they were like that. And then let's rotate this. And then let's start to shrink. Oops. I don't know, actually. So let's see. Uh, I think that's pretty close. So I've got a default color right now on the bottle. So I'm just going to make that white with a little bit of uh, specular reflection in it. So here we go. We've got this white. Sometimes I'll put a little bit of luminance in it, about like, I don't know, a low percentage, 20%, just to force the white. And then add reflection. And I usually go for like 5, 3 or 5%. And then drag it on there. Then this top piece wants to be this sort of see-through red. So let's go ahead and create that. I've got this uh, red shape here. Um, I could go through here, my asset browser, I might find a plastic. And I might be able to start with this. Um, if I see something that I think looks clear and see-through, not really. Um, and I could try to make it with this green one here and then just add transparency. Let's see what happens. So everything that's green, we need to change to red. So let's just lift that right off of here. And then I want to add transparency. There's a couple of different defaults. PET is a certain kind of plastic. I'll go ahead and use that. And then I want to turn down you know how see-through this is. Okay, let's try to group all these objects together that we want to have this one material on. So I'm going to go ahead and this is where if you've named your objects good, you can save a little time. I'm pretty. I have a pretty bad habit of naming everything. Um, let's 
Let's see. You can also just click the object in here. So that's this guy. I'll hide him. This guy. Now as I drop them into this hidden null, as I'm collecting them, they just disappear. And that's how I know I've got them. Okay, so is everything with that one. And then like this, drag and drop that on there. Okay. Not so bad. Okay, so I think that's probably gonna look pretty good. Now what I want to do is fill this up with a couple with some pills. So let's just save this and then I'll just open a new scene real quick to make the pill. Now my guides were a little fuzzy on my phone right there, but it should be close enough. So let's see, I'll load this into this window, load this one into this window. Now, the first thing I want to do is make sure these guides line up because as I'm taking the photos, my, my camera's moving and I might go a couple inches, a couple of centimeters in a different location, so they're not going to be the same size probably. So that's the first thing I do is make a measuring rod, scale it up to match one of them, like so. And then you want to align the object always to... Um, Get as close to the center of Cartesian space as possible. Going like that, like that, just touching the tips, putting them within the bounding box here. Then I go over to this object and see how close it matches. So it looks like it needs to be a little bit bigger. Scale it up a little bit, move it down, like that. Now the width is a little off, but it could be that the pill is just wider from one angle than the other. Kind of hard to tell. I've matched the top and bottom. So, I think we'll just call it like that. Okay, so then you look to see, does this look like any kind of a uh, platonic primitive? And the answer is yes, it looks like a capsule. So you go in here and you find the capsule platonic, platonic primitive. Take that and scale it up to match the guide. Like this. That's pretty much it. And then what you want to do is we're going to want to go and add a loop around here that has an extruded thickness. So I won't really be able to do that with my set selection because the, the caps north and south pole of these guys, they end in such a way that you can't do a set selection with, with the consistent size around the whole thing, right? But what you could do is make this square, scale it up to, to match the basic size of this. Okay, I can actually get the exact height from this capsule if I want to really nail it. So I'll just copy that, paste it in, like that. Oops. Okay, so I'm going to get that matched. Let's see. That looks pretty close. Wants to be, let's see, you've got the, the radius is this. So if I take the radius, times it by two, um, then I've got the exact measurement. Now, all I've got to do is um, basically add rounding. The rounding's not enough, so I've got to crank it up. Um, there we go. 100 seemed to kind of do it. Maybe 120. Yeah, 120. Okay, so now I've got this line that goes around the pill. So then what I can do is take this, another square, and then take a sweep, drop the two underneath each other, Scale this one down like that, and then just make it wider. And if I look at this guide right here, I can tell about how wide I need to go. So I'll go down here and just increase the width to about there. Okay, and then don't forget the. It's better for me just to have this sticking through the object, so I'll just make this a little wider. I might have to move it after. 
that's the wrong way. There we go. Now, if it's sticking out too far, what I can do is just make that original path smaller. So I'll small that out. Okay. So I just hit 500 subscribers. Thank you very much. Thank everybody for subscribing. Um, I've been getting a lot more subscribers since I started doing this live YouTube trying to teach people how to use Cinema 4D R25. And uh, don't worry, I've been rewarded for it too. I've had a lot of real world um, customers contacting me, which is sort of the goal. That this is a living portfolio, so that when you come across my work, um, if you don't know anything about 3D, maybe you watch this for a little bit and then you have the confidence um, to hire a 3D artist. So let's see, the, it's looking like the top's getting a little bit different. So like when I'm doing this scaling method, it's kind of working for the sides but not the top. So what I can do is current state this to an object just to have really quick control over it. That way I can scale it this way too. Like that. And then if I need to go up a little bit, I can go up a little bit like that. All right, and then not to forget Steve Jobs there. Add some rounding. Crank that rounding up, maybe 20. Oop, not that much. Let's go five. Okay, now let's take a look at this pill. Looks pretty good to me. Okay, so I'm just going to currency. I'm going to copy this like this. Now, um, there is a little logo on the pill. It just has the name. Tylenol 500. So, um, yeah, I don't really have a super great texture of that, but I do have this one right here. So let me see. Um, I'll just look online really quick for. Tylenol pill. Let's see if I can get a better logo. I mean, a better high resolution image of the pill that my camera couldn't do. It looks like I might have got lucky with this one. Let's see if the resolution's decent. Mm, looks almost as bad as my photo. This one might be good. Open image, new tab. Yeah, I'd say that's close enough for government work. So let's just grab that because it's better than my my photo. Then I'll open up Photoshop real quick. I'll bring that in. Zoom in on that. Now I want to select everything that's red. So I think that I... It's not the best resolution, but the pills are going to be small in the scene. So let me do select um, color range, I think. And I can increase the fuzziness. Try to just isolate that. It's like selecting just by the colors of the pixels. Let's go for that. Um, didn't seem to get all the edges and stuff, but let's go ahead. Um, I'm going to make a new layer with just that. Layer new via cut. And then shut off the background. Seems pretty good. So then what I want to do is crop this. I'm going to save it as a PNG. So I'll export quick PNG. This gives you your alpha channel. Um, just find your project you're working in. And then save it in there. I'll just call this Piltex version 1. Oh boy, did I screw that up? Version one pill underscore text. Okay. Put that back into Cinema 4D. Now let's introduce the texture. Let's just save this scene, save project as pill version one. You save that, and then the computer knows that if the textures are coming from here, it doesn't need to copy and them into a new folder, which if you don't haven't saved your scene, is just sort of in RAM. But it won't do that because I saved in the scene. Now I'm going to drag the textures in from that very same folder in the database. So here we go. Just grab that pill and drag and drop it right into here. 
Then you want to drag and drop it onto the this object right there. And then I'm going to do a uh, what's called a frontal no a flat projection. So you find the object, click on the texture, change the projection in your attribute manager to uh, flat. Then you want to do fit to region, draw where you want the projection to be. This is kind of like an imaginary theater screen. So boom. But the orientation might not be correct. See, it's rotated at odd. So go into this tool here, and you can adjust that. So I know I want to go like this. By default, tiling is on. So shut that off. And then I know I want to scale it. Like, so I go to the scale tool and scale it down like this. Now I can see my guide here. So I can just try to match that to my guide. Um, I can go back and forth like this. It's pretty close. It looks like, you know, maybe it's offset like that. Pretty good. Okay. Now you see that big white there, right? That's because I didn't load in the elf channel. So if I double click this, hit copy, copy shader, go down to my alpha channel, and then just hit paste. It will magically disappear. Where's paste? Boom. Okay, so then you're just left with that. Now we just want, um, I'll probably just use the same white that I used on the bottle for that. All right, so let's take this. I'm going to save this. I'm going to save incremental. Now I want to try to reduce the polygons on this guy. Because I'm gonna, I'm about to go fill the bottle up with these. So if this is high poly, then the computer is gonna have to chug a little bit more. If I can sort of clean the polygons up right now, it's a little bit lighter. So um, turn this to none. This guy here turn to linear. Um, oh boy, that doesn't look too great. Let's see, why did it do that? Didn't have enough points going around the horn there. So let's see, we might not be able to do that for that one. It can only go so far. If it destroys the shape, it's going to fix it like that. All right, so let's see. Let's just see what happens with that. Now, this guy here is pretty low. Rotation segments are already pretty low, but we'll go to 12. Okay, now let's select all this. Current state to an object. Connect objects and delete. I don't really need those. Okay. Now I could try to do this little polygon reduction tool here. See this remesh? Drop it under it. And you can see it right here. But see how it adds like these triangles and stuff? If I turn it off. You know, it's doing a good job remeshing this object right here. But let's see. So maybe the thing to do would be, well, you know, I do lose a lot of my sort of nice edge. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go with this. I could fight it a little bit more and try to get a little bit more low poly, but I don't think it's necessary. I think that this object's going to work just fine like this. Okay, see the back there says the tile all reverse. Probably don't want that. Let me just look at these things and see how they're on both sides. So it's only on the one side, the other side's white. So what I'll do to get it just to show up on this side is just make a quick set selection. So if I go in here to polygon mode, paint a couple polygons around this texture like this. Not a bad idea to overshoot it. Um, then you don't have that problem like I had in the label earlier. Now if I say set selection right here, store selection, I could name that, um, you know, text, because it's the text on the pill. Then you go into this object right here, and when it says set selection, write in text, whatever name you gave the pill. Then if I go to the back, it's not on these, because the set selection isn't there for the texture, only right there. Okay, so let's just call this pill, and save it, hit copy. And close the scene. Let's bring it into here. Okay, now the pills are much smaller. So 
I'm just going to eyeball this. I'm going to grab a pill on my desk because I have the, the object right here. I'm just going to kind of put it next to it. Now I know that I can do... Well, you know what? I'll just see how many pills does it take to go across the top. It looks like about three. So let me just confirm that. So I got one, two... About two and three quarters of a pill makes it across the top. So I can get the size pretty quick by just making uh, three pills. So if you grab a cloner, zero it out under your object, like so. Drop it underneath the cloner. Go linear. And you've got three. Now just increase this until they're about yay big. Okay. So there we go. I'll just take this and rotate it like this. Bring it on up here. Now oh, you can tell that they're too big. I only want it to be two and three quarters. So I'll go like this. Oops, oops. You gotta be careful what mode you're in. I was just in scale there. Something like that. Something like that. Two and three quarters about the size. Okay. So I'll pop that pill out of there. Get rid of the cloner. And I'm just going to save my scene, save incremental, and I'm going to hide this cap right here. Like that. Now let's see if this works. I want this object here to be in an emitter. So I'm going to add this emitter. And we'll put the pill as a trial to the emitter. If you click this button down here, it's going to say show objects. That way when you click play and it starts to fire out your particles, your, your emitter, you're going to see the object. If you don't, it just represents it with a little dot like that. You can see the little dots almost are running as fast as these objects. Back in the day, like 20 years ago, you turn this on your computer, it would just crash. <laughs> so you would just look at these and then you hit your render button. Okay, so now I'm going to rotate this so it fires down. I'm going to increase how many there are. So I've got 10. Let's just do 100. And this is a per second emitter, I think. So if we just have it emit, well, let's see. I'm trying to figure out how we're going to get 500 to go, but I don't know if it really matters. We'll just keep going until the thing fills up. So let's see what this looks like. Show the objects. Okay, I'm not quite sure if they're gonna bounce around each other. Let me just turn that back down to 10. Maybe we'll run it for longer. And turn up the speed. And let's see if this works. So then, what you do is you make the pill a dynamic object. So you go down to uh, simulation, and you call this a rigid body. I usually mix these up, and then I have to kind of like figure it out that I've done them backwards. But then you go back down to this object, and you make it simulation a rigid body. I mean a uh, collider body, I think. So let's see. Sometimes I'll play this and the objects will just fall. Okay, that's actually working pretty good. So it looks like maybe they're bumping into each other up here. Um, they are starting to collect down there. So why don't I just lower this emitter down into the bottle and see if I can fix that problem. And then we'll hit play. Basically, I just want to fill the bottle up. OK, 
Okay, so I'm gonna add a couple more. You see my scene keeps starting over at 90 frames. I'm gonna go up to a thousand frames. That's probably way more than I need. Um, but that'll give me time to let this simulation run for a while. So I'll just run that. Let's see if it fills the bottle up for us. Do, 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 do. Okay, so see that? Now I want my simulation to fill the bottle up more, so let me run it longer. So if you go in here and look at the emitter, it's going to run from frame 0 to frame 100. You see I'm at frame 356. I'm about halfway up, so let's change this to, say, 500 and see if it runs the bottle over. Let your cup over be filled and let it overfloweth. We've heard that one before. So what? It fills up. Filling up, filling up, filling up, filling up. And... Well, is it going to overrun? And it overruns. Look at that. What luck. Alright, so I don't know. That was running to about 320. So it looks like if we go to 320... Um, let's see. I'm going to a 1,000. Where did I go to? 500. So let's say punch in 320. Run it again. And then see... You're going to good fill up. You're going to notice. See how it's like poking out of these right here? What I'll do at the very end is select everything when I current save to an object and just boop, shrink it a little bit to get around that problem. Woohoo! <laughs> Dynamics are so cool. All right. There you go. Filled up the bottle with pills. So I'm going to hit stop. Now what I want to do is current state this to an object. Okay, so what I'll do is select the emitter, select the pill, right click, and say connect objects and delete. Or now I sometimes go back and forth on this one and it'll it can do a couple of different things. I might not really want all of these things connected into one mesh, it would be alright, but I mean it would be better if they're all separate objects. So I could try first current state to an object, but Let's see if it works. Okay, see what it did? So that's pretty much useless to me right there. So they all have this emitter on them, right? Boom. So that's not what I want. So let me just wrestle with this. Right click, connect objects, and delete. Same problem. Hit undo. Now I've lost my simulation. Okay. So a way you got to do it is believe that there's this option where you can bake it. So you see you go under object up here and you see how it says bake and delete. So now when you bake and delete, you can think of back to like the platonic primitives where you have like a cube and then you get those orange um, ability to change it. But as soon as you current state an object, you lose that. It's just a random point cloud. This is similar. So you're going to lose the simulation, the fluidity of that, and it's going to fix it to keyframes, where every single thing in the simulation, now if you look at it, has a keyframe. And it has a, every frame, every pill has a rotation value and a position value and Cartesian coordinates for every frame. If I click this button, it'll generate that for me. And won't think about it as simulation. So here we go. Bake and delete. Let's give it a shot does this little exporting. Theoretically when it's done it's going to get rid of my emitter and it's going to come back with a bunch of just polygon primitives that all have keyframes, hypothetically. Then I can go to the keyframe I want around 320 and just delete all the others. So when I go back to zero it just freezes frame 320 forever. Do, 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 do. So we're halfway done. Okay. Now it's done. Now, let's see if I run up to here. 320. Now notice I can go backwards. So you can't do that in a simulation. You have to go back and rerun it in cinema. So this is a good indication that I'm where I want to be. Go right around 320, everything's settling. Whoops, and around here. 
And then, so if you right click this, show tracks. Uh, actually, I don't know, I don't see a bunch of tracks. So that must be what that Elmbeck file that it's linking to is. So it's linking to a file outside of Cinema 4D that has all these tracks. Kind of like, I don't know, motion capture, I guess. So what I can do is just take this, current state to an object, and delete. Connect objects and delete. Now it's succeeded. It didn't make that line of pills under the bottom. Um, did I lose my texture on these, though? That's one thing. Yeah, it does seem as though I lost my texture. So, if I just drag that on there, will it add it? Um, no. Okay. So that's one thing I didn't intend, was to lose my textures. Um, thinking, how would I get those back? Hmm. Not quite sure. Not quite sure. So, you know, there's many different ways to skin the cat. If I was in a production, I was trying to get this out. I think what I would do really quickly is just grab my pill, right? Right here. I'll just grab this guy, bring him into my scene. That oh, looks like he was too big because remember I scaled him down. But let's just scale him down. And then bring him up. Oops. Like this. Got to get the size a little bit closer. Like this. Wants to be a little bigger. Tylenol seems to be backwards. You can fix that really quick by just making a negative right here. Uh, that didn't work on that one. Maybe on this one. Hmm. Okay, in lieu of that, just go into your tool right here and just rotate it like this there we go now does this look a little bit too big it seems about all right whoops make sure I'm in object mode is that about right maybe a little smaller I'll just place a couple of these like this like an instance. Just pop one over there. You can rotate these so they don't look exactly the same. There we go. Nobody will ever be the wiser. Smoke and mirrors, baby. Pop those up. See it's interfering right there. Just rotate it a little bit this way. There we go. Close enough for government work, as I like to say. Okay, so then let's just take this right here. All of these guys. You see they're popping out of the bottle like that. Let's group them with the pill here. And these and all these uh, instances and group and then let's scale it down in all the directions like so scale we just want to get just want to tuck these in so they're not kind of sticking out of the bottom Whoop. Look around okay it looks pretty good then if you were to happen to look up here you see that it's full now you really wouldn't want your texture on the inside of the bottle like that. You know, if you were to shoot the shot from here, you don't really want to see that. So we could approach that problem by, uh, you know, if it was a problem, it might not be a problem. You know, you might have the cap on it like this, and you might not see that from your shot. But let's just say you did, for the sake of argument. You could take this object right here, and you could give it thickness with that tool I was telling you about, cloth. Right, like this and then we could grab this object make it a child drop it back underneath that turn down subdivisions to zero and then let's give it a thickness if you want it to go within I think you need to give it a negative number let's go negative five. Oh, that went out so if I do five maybe it goes in okay now I'm going to do this 
you're getting the thickness right here. So if I turn it off, it's just paper thin. Turn it on, it's like that. Maybe it's a little too, let's just go like 2.5. We'll do half of that. Okay. Now, if I take this current state to an object, I might have to redo this texture work right here. Um, but let's just do it. Connect objects and delete. So now that's the thickness is no longer something the computer's thinking about. It's just baked right into it. Now, if I double click this, you see how the set selection is on the outside and the inside? So I can just do this, select loop, add to it, whoops, that was all. If you, hit, if you hit U, W, it selects everything. If you hit U, Y, it only adds the next adjacent polygons that are touching your set selection. So now if I go in here to that and just say set selection, you see how the inside's not selected? So watch the texture on the inside. It's going to disappear when I say store selection. <laughs> of course it did not. Uh, let me see, why is that? Oh, it's because the old cinema used to do this just great, but the new one seems to be problematic with that. Now, it could have been a pilot error. Let's just undo this. I go back in time. Yeah, you see how I have that selected? In the old cinema 4D, if you were to say uh, store selection, it would have updated it for you. But the new cinema 4D R25 does not. It adds a new set selection. So you have to either copy this name or you give it a new name. So say like label. So now that set selection is called label. Well, take a look at the set selection that's controlling the texture. It's called polygon selection one. I'm sure they had good reasons for that, but I don't know why. If I just put in label, boom, there we go. Oh, wait a minute. It disappeared from the outside too. Hold on. Oh, it's because I put it on the wrong texture maybe? Yeah, so this must be label here. Boom, there we go. Okay, but it's on the inside too. So let me get rid of this. There we go. Because that set selection was there too, and the set selection was putting it both places, I just deleted the one on the inside, so we're good to go. Preserved our texture work down there, not bad. Now we want to turn on subdivision surfaces. Boom. Okay, there we go. We have a thickness to it, the inside's white. And, you know, second thought, if I just, would you select loop? Select loop, where are you? Loop selection. Like so. Turn off your subdivision surface. So all I was thinking was is that you could give this a little more thickness here if you just scaled it down without changing the Y. Like so. Oh, I know what to do. Rather than doing that, just add a cut here. So I'll go to your loop cutter. Um, where the heck is it? Cut, loop path cut. Just add one here. And add one here. And add one down here. That's going to make it look a little thicker. See? So the hypernerve isn't just folding that. Alright, now there is actually this one little screw thing on here to hook the cap to it. It doesn't have much of a revolution on the actual bottle itself. It kind of just does one 360. So in order to create that, you just grab a polygon primitive that's called a helix right here. And then make that helix oriented like this. Whoops. Like so, there's a 90. Okay, so this is going around twice. See, it's going 360 and then going around again. 720 or something. Yeah, 720. So change that to 360 so it only goes around once. And then change the height so it's not so tall. So it's like, you know, just like that, basically. And this thing is only at the very top, down to the almost the middle. So if I lower it down like this scale it up so it's a little bit bigger in diameter and there we go it's going to the top and we want it to go in the middle so we change the height make it a little taller like so uh, maybe 15 okay like that okay right, then to give an actual surface to it grab your square 
And then grab your sweep. And just put the two as a child of the sweep. You're going to have to take the rectangle and make it smaller. Like that. If you're seeing a gap right there, go into the helix and scale it down. Like this. And then add, add maybe a little bit of rounding to this, maybe make it bigger. So I'm going to 4 and 4. Maybe I'll even go 5 and 5. And then add rounding. I want more rounding than that. Yeah. Like that. Okay. Now the bottle itself doesn't have these really sharp. I can add, I think, um, no, actually not going to be too easy to do that. But what I could do to get around that, if I wanted to, if it was a problem, is I could just take this, current state to an object, like this. And then take a look at these polygons right here. Wow, so you see it's massively subdivided. So in order to counter that, you can go in here and turn these down. So you turn this down to the opposite. No, make that square. This little guy right here is uniform. Make it none. Now watch what happens when I current state to an object. You have a much lower poly object. See? Boom. And then watch what happens even just to this if I just put this underneath a subdivision surface. Boom. Okay, that's kind of more what I'm looking for. Wow, that's looking really cool. For me, I'm getting all kinds of pleasure dopamines when I just see this materializing before my face. You could put me into prison and just have me doing this. I'd be the happiest camper in the world. Um, okay. See how this texture looks a little low res? It's kind of a cool trick you can do. If you go into the viewport, you'll notice um, it has a certain setting for the resolution, texture preview size. Now, if Cinema 4D has a lot of different objects, it wants these things to kind of be a little bit compressed. But if you want to have a higher resolution while you're working, you just put no scale. And then you get a really brilliant looking texture preview. Okay, I say this is uh, completed. So let's go ahead and pop it into the scenes that I like to use to render. Remember, Chris Vila would hate me for the way that I have named my scenes here. I'm, I'm very bad at, while I'm working, naming the stuff in this object manager. To me, it doesn't matter. Here I am, I've got this, you know, pill bottle. Um, but, in general, I don't think people really uh, are too happy if they open somebody else's scene. And they can't clearly go through and dissect everything. So... Be aware of that. If, if anybody else is going to be looking at your scenes, all these things should be should be named properly. You know, when someone's looking at this instance, they don't know what the hell it is. Is it an instance of the thing going around here? Is this? If this was named proper, pills, you know, it would just be better. So keep that in mind. That's something uh, I'll try to improve on over the years. Okay, so let's see. Let's take this, save it, copy it. Now what I'm going to do, I've got textures on this, so I'm going to have to just do a little bit of work here to get it into my rendering scene. So I'll go to my latest 3D model I've made, and I'm going to hijack the scene to get the lights. Get rid of that object, grab this object. Paste it in here. It's going to be huge, I think. Yeah. So let's just scale it down. That's another thing you're going to get a slap on the wrist too for as well. If this isn't real world size when people open it in their programs, it kind of frustrates them. So it would be helpful if you um, made it close to the real size. Okay, looking pretty good, I think. Although my pills did change colors. Maybe that's just because I'm seeing them through my cap here in my new lighting. I think that's what it is. No, hmm, interesting. Well, let's just fix that real quick. Um, where are those pills? There's most of them. Now where's this one? Oh, this guy right here. And actually wants to be on that. Whoops. 
Okay. Oh, that looks really nice, huh? Okay, so let's put this back. All right, now let's save the scene into the proper um, location in the database. Okay, so save project as, go find your new folder, and uh, it's going to up the rev, it's version 3, go to version 4. Now I need to have an important file, it's just HDR, copy that, throw that in the database, paste on it, that way when you go to render it's going to work. And let's render and see what it looks like. Using the physical render with global illumination on the default settings. This is actually a Turbo Squid um, scene that I found for Cinema 4D that they suggested you use for your models. Um, and it does, I think it looks great. So I've been using them on all my models. Taking a second to render. Mm -mm -mm. It's about halfway in. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy these videos. And uh, if you've got any comments, Post them down there below. I'm going to be uploading this to Turbo Squid momentarily. You'll be able to purchase this model. They're, it's just based on what other people are selling models for on Turbo Squid. So you upload the model, you take a look at what everybody else is selling the same model for in the community, and then maybe try to beat the price by a dollar um, to encourage people to buy your model. It's taking its sweet time on the cap there, but it looks pretty good. she blows thank you very much it's been a joy and um, if you have a 3d model you like me to 3d model please post it in the comments who knows maybe you've got a client that would pay you six hundred dollars for one of these you could get me to 3d model it buy it off a of turbo squid for 20 bucks <laughs> that would be fun uh, you know there's nothing wrong with that um, yeah so I'll be here tomorrow and again, if there's anybody out there that's watching with a real-world project and want me to 3D model something for your corporation, I would love to do that. Later on today, I'll be calling people up all around the United States trying to solicit my services to them. Um, it would actually be pretty funny if I let you guys watch me do that, but because I, I usually end up with, with an old woman at a corporation who knows absolutely nothing about what I'm talking to her about. And then... They'll, they'll think that maybe it's an engineering thing I'm doing. And most recently, at a corporation, they thought that I was talking about 3D printing. But I'm trying to tell the lady, no, 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 I need to talk to the marketing department because you can use this technology for advertising. But yeah, so it goes. Anyway, it was wonderful. I'll talk to you again soon.